We are a project really recent in Barcelona. We started living last December, so we've been living there for the last six months only. Um, just a couple of pictures. You have more pictures in our website and also it's in the exhibition. But um, our building is a 20 unit building, uh, different sizes of units. And we also focus a lot in the sustainable aspect and community aspect. Uh, the structure is made of uh, wood, of CLT panels, CLT for contralaminated timber, not for community land trust. Um, and it happens to be the tallest wooden structure in Spain, not because it's really tall, it's only six floors, but um, because we don't build much with wood in Spain until now. Um, this is the inside, we have a, this courtyard with a greenhouse that help us to control the climate. And as you see, all the, all the units and all the communal spaces, they face inwards because we, we really look for this community feeling and sharing spaces and knowing each other. Uh, just one image of the insides. So you see inside the, the timber is only seen on the ceiling. And then we have plaster, um, like boards and, and concrete on, on the floor to capture the sun energy. So just for you to have an idea, this summer, um, this, sorry, this winter, uh, all those 24 units that are facing south, they didn't need any heating. It was 8, 10 degrees outside, and inside it was 22, 23 degrees, even if there is, there is some heating, but we didn't need to use it. And this also relates a lot with the economy aspects, you know, not to save uh, energy, to save, to be sustainable, but also to save money on the long term, uh, especially, at least in Spain, uh, energy is now uh, super expensive. So for us, it was important to, to keep this affordable as well. <clears throat> Just uh, four main ideas of our model. Uh, as this morning, Maria mentioned that she doesn't like elderly. We don't like co-housing words, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, but because in Spain, it's related a lot with what we've been discussing, you know, this middle class idea, uh, and it's been quite taken by corporations. So we talk a lot of um, cesión de uso, so grant of use. So we focus a lot on the use aspect, no? that, that the important thing is that you have the right to enjoy uh, your house as much as you need it, but you never have the opportunity to take profit of, out of it. So it's a model that it's a non-profit cooperative, uh, the, co the property, not the, co the ownership is collective, it never uh, belongs to a person and the person never has the right to resell or to sublet the house. In, in opposite, we have this right of use, no? so the right to use the house as, as long as you need it. Um, and this is, especially in, in Spain, for instance, it's a home uh, owner-occupied scheme mostly. You know? It's 80% of, of population lives in a, their own home. Uh, because the rent market also is really unstable. Uh, now it changed, but we used to have only three-year contracts, so this doesn't give you any stability. No? And also we focus a lot on the self-organization aspect, no? that inhabitants have the right to decide how they want to live and how their house has to be in all the aspects. Then others for uh, aspects that we uh, also take attention, no, like the affordability, stability, and flexibility of, of housing, the co-housing and sharing aspect, sustainability, and then also we re rely, uh, we try to empower, empower a lot the social and solidarity economy sector. You know? So these projects are really big. You know? In our case, it was like a 3 million euro project. So we try to invest as much as we can in the social and solidarity economy instead of going to traditional uh, more free market capitalist econ uh, companies. No, the only. Well, I, I will say that later. Also, for you to have some hope, uh, this is something quite new in Spain. So we had a cooperative housing in Spain, but it was uh, just for buying. So at the end of the construction, the tenants would buy the units, and then after 20 years, you could resell that into the free market. Now this is the first time that uh, we're doing this right of use model that we learned from especially Denmark, but also Uruguay. And Uruguay is a good example to look at uh, when it comes to 
uh, doing cooperative housing for the poorest. You know, there is for the very poorest of the society who access uh, cooperative housing. These are examples in Catalonia. The first one was Calcasas in private land in the rural area. Now there's plenty more that are uh, uh, starting as a group. There's a couple of these dots that just last month, one got the, the land from the municipality and another one who bought it on the private market. But there's a lot of interest. Uh, we've been working on that for 10 years and now we start seeing the results. And in Barcelona, we had a couple of uh, pilot models. One was ours, La Borda, and then the one that is written, Princesa, in the city center. This was just a six unit uh, renovation, also a building from the municipality. And all the rest that you see in the in Barcelona map on the right, um, those are projects that are now under construction, uh, five of them because of uh, land from the municipality and a couple of them because of land of a foundation that I will mention later. In our case, it's also important to, to mention that we didn't came out of nothing. No? Um, we were born in the, inside the Cambadio um, fight. This was a fight to reclaim a nine hectare um, industrial complex, so kind of a brown site that was not abandoned but was being yeah, like forgotten kind of. Uh, and since 2011, we managed to get the leasehold uh, of all the red areas that you see in the middle. So first, it was like a temporary leasehold. Well, first we managed we managed to occupy the uh, factory after we got a leasehold. Uh, and just last month, the city council of Barcelona voted in favor for a leasehold of 50 years. So we were first on a temporary basis now. It's more in a uh, long term. And then, can I? Yeah. So here is where La Borda is located. And this fight was born also inside this um, communal project. So the land, at least in big cities in Spain, is one of the main aspects when it comes to economy. You know? Like in Barcelona, when you buy a house, 50% of what you are paying is actually the land. So if we wanted this project to be affordable, we needed to get access to cheap land, and we managed to, to do so with a leasehold from the municipality who gave us this piece of land of 600 square meters between this tall building and this smaller building in here uh, for 75 years. Then we pay a small fee, it's less than 4,000 euros per month, which is a little bit, but it's almost nothing. Uh, and this belongs, you know, this is passed through the, to the cooperative. And then to the cooperative, we built a building on top of it, and then it's transferred the use to the, to the users. This was done as a pilot project, but as I mentioned, the, the municipality, after we proved successful, uh, to be successful, they made it in a, into a public policy. And last year, they released seven plots that finally there were five of them. They were. Uh, they made a call f for groups, and five of them, they were transferred to groups. And this, just now, they have a call for three more plots for new groups to apply for them. And this also has been spreading into different parts of Spain, so especially Mallorca, Valencia, Sevilla, and other municipalities like Madrid and um, the Basque Country, they're also interested. Now, we had local elections this month, so we still have to see what's going to happen with all these projects. Uh, something that has been mentioned also this morning in the workshop, no? the, the process that these um, projects takes, especially in our case because we were kind of a pilot project. So we started in 2012, or some people started in 2012, uh, a small group of 10 people exploring the project. Once they knew that they could have access to land, they opened, that was in 2014, and they made a call for the rest of the families. This is when, I, when I'm joining it. And then we've been five years doing all the process, no? like doing the design, doing the economic uh, design, finding the money, finding all the regulations and, and permissions and so on. And here I think I have one more expanded, or maybe it's later. You see on down the, also the complexity of the organization, how it's growing while it's growing and at the different moments now, that we enter to start living, we also we are in a moment to uh, change our uh, organization. 
from that, that was a little bit uh, essay error, and we, we learn a lot from this. We are now also, we also try to uh, help other groups and to spread our knowledge as much as possible. No? For instance, we had to make our legal status, which was quite complicated. We had to hire uh, some lawyers. So after we had all this status approved by the government, now we release it for other groups so they only have to copy our rules and so on. And then we also made this um, process of how to start no? from the very beginning when you are just a bunch of people and then all the things you have to do when it comes to social and purple, uh, legal, uh, cohabitation, co-living and economic aspects. No? And I have some leaf sets, so I'm sorry it's only in Catalan, but have nice drawings. So uh, I have a few of them, so if you come to me after and smile, I will give it to you. Uh, if not, you have it in, um, on the website in PDF, and if you want to translate it into English, we'll be more than happy to give it, the document to you. Ah, yeah, this is what I wanted to show you as well, no? the, how the organization grow, and here you have also no, the different commissions that we had, legal, architecture, communication, uh, co-living, and uh, administration, economy, and then what you see at the last uh, uh, diagram here, the last, uh, all the spheres are the professionals that we hired, and all of them, they were from the social economy. You know? the, they were all cooperative, and the ones that they were not, at the end of the process, we converted them into cooperatives. So <laughs> we spread the social economy idea. Uh, the only one that we couldn't hire as a social economy was the, cons the builder, the constructor which is one of the worst sectors in Spain, the more linked to the mafia and all the bad things. Now we're trying to create one, but it's a complicated process. Um, just to mention also the importance of the self-organization, no? the, the, that here it's not, we're not talking about participation, we're talking about leading the process by the inhabitants ourselves. And in all aspects, not in the economic aspect, but also in the design process, in what things do we put in common, and so on. How do we want to live, and so on. This that has to do especially with living together, but also is linked to economy. You know? the, the fact that our flats are a little, bit, a little bit smaller because we decided to put 10 square meters of each unit to communal space uh, in order to, to share more and to meet each other and so on, but also in order to save. No? Instead of 28 um, washing machines, we have four. And actually, we spend two months with two washing machines, and we function perfectly. So all those things that you can save. Not a guest room. Instead of having a spare guest room that you use once every three months, all those things are put together. So also in order to, to save money. This is the long, yeah. Well, we're, now we're about to close this space because it's also the space that the children use next to the most dangerous space with all the chemicals here. But uh, <laughs> there's, there's going to be a, a wall there. <laughs> so also we saved a lot with not finishing everything once we enter. No? So all the, commu mm, the communal spaces, we are now finishing them up. Uh, and also, as I mentioned, the, the consumption, the energy consumption. No? So, here on, on the left, you have what the normal house uh, consumes in Spain. Here is what the, the actual, in the middle, the actual regulations, what are they asking you to consume? And on the right is what are we consuming? No? So all this reduction, all this effort is also because we can invest a little bit more now, because in five years, we're going to uh, save or get all this money back from all the energy we're saving. And now it comes the most important part. No? How, how do we pay that? Um, <clears throat> so here you have the final budget was uh, 3.1 million euros, uh, but included uh, with all the, not only the construction, but the permits and the, uh, all the professionals and so on. And basically, we had three big uh, figures. No? So first, we had the capital that we had to put up front which was 20% more or less. 
So at the end, each family had to put uh, 18,500 euros. And this is the only money that uh, you get back <coughs> when you leave. And doesn't grow. It's a contribution. It's not an equity. It doesn't give you any special rights. It's just the money that we needed in order to get the the other loans. No. Um, then uh, we expected to have some grants and so on. You will see at the end what happened with this. Uh, but basically, what what we had to do is was going to get some loans uh, to get the money. No. And this is. Uh, this, now the, the next step that we have to fight in Spain is the fact that we don't have any kind of public bank or organization that uh, give us uh, cheap loans. No? And, and each um, percent of the interest rate that we have to pay more, it has a, it's a huge burden in the affordability of the project. So we had to fight uh, a lot to find uh, cheap uh, loans. So the way we did it uh, was with one, well, a couple of big loans from this, this part here, from kind of a credit union called COP57. We convinced them to finance uh, housing projects. They didn't that before. They were a cooperative to find, to found um, other workers cooperative or agriculture cooperative, industry cooperative, but they never went into the housing uh, sector because Spain, we've been suffering a lot from that. Not many banks went bankrupt because of the housing crisis and the uh, mortgage crisis and so on. So they didn't, they didn't want to get into the housing sector, but we convinced them to do so. And now they're also funding uh, other projects. And then the, the biggest or the more innovative thing that we did was uh, this part here that I will explain later, but it was kind of a, a micro uh, funding, micro loaning scheme, you know, like we ask small uh, loans to people. So as I was mentioning also the, the fact of the grants, you know, so this was the initial plan that we had. Obviously there was some uh, increase on the cost as it always happens, not only tied to the construction, but also tied to other things that we didn't took into account or that we thought that we could avoid uh, paying and at the end, at the last minute, we had to pay. And then um, the, the, the issue also with the grants, no? And so uh, just when we finished the building and we already got uh, all the money we needed with the loan scheme, the generous Spanish state gave us a half a million grant uh, so we could pay back all the loans. But this is a problem that we have with our system, no? that the Spanish state, they make a plan every year and they call for people to ask for this grant, but they, you don't know it until maybe one year. So now every time that we make a housing project, we cannot count in this, with this money. You know? And this, this is the purple uh, section that you see here. So now we'll probably pay back uh, some of the most expensive loans that we got. Um, on average, we paid a 2% interest rate, uh, which is better than we got, we would get in a normal bank. Uh, and it was basically because of that. No, we made these campaigns of uh, participatory loans, so asking money for small loans of 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 money, uh, euro. Uh, and we will get them a small interest rate, 1.5, 1.75, which is more that they will get in the bank if they put their savings there, but it's way less than if we will go into a private bank. Even the ethical banks, that some of them, they were willing to give us money, but in a high interest rate. So, for instance, we made this campaign and we got all this money for uh, 8,006. 8,000, 60,000, uh, well, this number uh, <laughs> uh, of euros uh, in only 19 days, no? And 300 different people offered their money, and we had to stop them and say, okay, okay, we got the money already, uh, we're fine with it. <clears throat> and also these different offers that we did to people to let us money. And just the last important slide, uh, so now, we pay a monthly fee, which is similar to a 
social rent. So on average, we pay 600 euros per month. This is related to the square meters that you have. Uh, and basically, it's to pay back the, the loans. No, that is this scheme here. And our idea is uh, once that we pay back the loans, we still pay, obviously, some for the maintenance of the building. But also, we don't want to decrease the fee because our idea is to get some money for future projects. Also, we, we can lend the money uh, to future projects. And just if you want to know more, uh, Laborda website has an English section, so all the information is in English there for you. Our website is only in Catalan, but has a lot of pictures. And in the, this is the foundation that you will find. It's only in Catalan and Spanish, but you will find English documents as well. And if you read Spanish, we published this book um, this year, where you can find also all these things more in, in depth, but in Spanish. So I think that's all. Thank you. Thank you.